Hey everybody, I hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to a very exciting episode of CSK News. As always, guys, let's get right into it. And first off today, guys, in CSK News, what first seemed like a team issue has now become a personal matter, guys, as Mouse Sports announced late last night the kicking and the benching of former Hellraiser player known as Oscar, as many of you guys know. But this is due to personal issues, as they announced on their website just a couple days ago, guys. And it said they also stated it would prevent him from focusing on the game. So obviously going to be a more serious issue there, guys. So I do want to move on. Don't want to get too into depth as to what's going on in Oscar's personal life as of right now. But just late last night, guys, they also predicted in the ESL Pro League with their first matches and the guy replacing them will be their former teammate and stand-in and current stand-in for the team and that will be next guys and he actually played quite well with the team they played against Virtus Pro in a best of two series in ESL Pro League last night they split that series 1-1 the first game going in their favor 16-8 and they actually in the second game took Virtus Pro to a fourth overtime yes a quadruple overtime where next looked decent and the rest of the team including Chris J looked amazing Chris J actually led the team in frags in both of those games with 52 frags in that fourth overtime game so the team looking quite well with next as a stand-in player I know it's kind of hard to say but the team's looking quite well although Virtus Pro did complain about uh, having obviously issues with just coming back from ESL New York a couple days ago so I'm going to talk about uh, Virtus Pro as of right now guys but yes it seems that Hellraisers or current mouse sports player Oscar will not be returning to the active roster anytime soon and like I said in the previous clip guys I want to talk about Virtus Pro we've had a string of complaints come from this team including both Neo and Taz now I first want to ask you guys do you think both Neo and Taz have points here this is my main, my main argument about this short little clip here. So going on guys, first off, right after ESL New York a couple days ago, we had Neo come out on Facebook and very kindly point out the problems with ESL New York. As many of you guys know, Virtus Pro plays second over there to Navi in a lengthy series after also playing a lengthy series with SK Gaming the match before. If you guys do not know, Neo's main complaint here was actually having the semifinals and the finals on the same day, which many tournament hosts do do, but ESL New York actually had these within an hour of each other. We had Virtus Pro go into a lengthy four to five hour session, which went to map three with SK Gaming with many overtimes included as many of you guys know if you watched that including map number two which went to three overtimes so all in all guys that match versus SK went four to five hours long they had less than an hour's worth of rest while Navi had several hours worth of rest and they went right into the final match which also went to map number three and all together to be told probably a seven to eight hour intense gaming session for Virtus Pro which as as Neo put in his in his uh, actual article here in his Facebook post it's like a long run you know the longer you go the more tired you're going to get no matter what um, so he actually had a very kind way of putting that ESL New York and there's many tournament hosts out there that do the same thing like this guys but they have a longer break than ESL New York did so do they have a reason here to complain now Taz also said he also tweeted out this guys on screen as well because the same day they flew back from ESL New York, they also had to play an ESL's other event, ESL Pro League, against Mouse Sports in the best of two series, which I talked about as well. Now, I did say Mouse Sports played very well. I did not take into account, though, Virtus Pro obviously going to be jet lagged, very tired from the day before. And so Taz and the team were very upset they had to play the same day, and ESL would not bend the rules and actually push their matches back. So, my question now to you guys is are these valid enough arguments for ESL? You know, when you come down to it, guys, some tournament hosts cannot afford to have a venue for an extra day, or maybe they don't want to push group stages and semifinals in the same day. Most of these tournament events only stretch between two to three days, and that means either putting the semifinals to the group stage days or the quarterfinals and semifinals on the same day. Do you have a day dedicated to group stages, one day to quarterfinals and semifinals, and then a final stage on the last day? The only problem with this would be, guys, is a venue really going to want to rent out a whole stadium or, or a whole a whole venue? You know, it's going to cost a lot of money for an entire day just for one finals match between two teams. It's going to last maybe two to three hours long. Does a venue want to risk that amount of money for that kind of show, especially if you have a finals matchup? Let's say Virtus Pro and Navi. Let's say that series is over in two maps and less than two hours. Is it really worth it for the venue. Do these guys have valid arguments? I definitely agree that Virtus Pro had a reason to complain here, but again, probably going to have more arguments from these pros in the future if the kind of things like this persist with ESL having semifinals and finals back to back within an hour of each other. And also on stream yesterday from Get Right or a couple days ago, NIP's very own Get Right had a very important announcement, guys. He said the team will be continuing to play with Mike Delaley, as many of you guys know him, Bill, in place of Pith because Pith is still recovering from that hand injury from quite some time ago, and we've had no announcements of his progress ever since, I believe, it was a month and a half ago where he came out and said he's still trying to recover he's still trying to play and get better slowly but surely so ever ever since then guys no announcements on pith and ip has been playing decently well with mike lilly besides their two losses last night in esl pro league both to fanatic which is again a team that's always gonna be difficult to play in esl pro league or any setting whatsoever but they actually came out and get right set on stream guys they do plan on playing with mike lilly for epicenter in two weeks also esl pro league finals in sao paulo brazil in a couple weeks as well if they actually qualify for that guys they 
still have to qualify for those, which will be early in October as well. And also, guys, on top of that, E-League Season 2, which is in the first week of December and coming on, and will actually go throughout mid-December as well. They do plan on playing with Michael Lilly for all three of those events, Epicenter, ESL Pro League, and E-League Season 2 qualifiers as well, guys. They plan on playing with Michael Lilly for all three of those, as long as Pitt does not recover. Uh, what is looking right now, we will play with Michael Lilly on the Epic Center. Uh, Brazil depends on uh, if we qualify and Atlanta uh, but it's not official so don't take my word for granted or anything like that but that's the plan at least. And Liquid's very own JDM guys beat me to it as he yesterday announced his new brand or I guess it's going to probably be an apparel line called Lounge Nation. Kind of ironic though guys, his new brand does include the word lounge. I'm not really sure why lounge is such a popular title in the CSGO community guys. It is called Lounge Nation though and it's going to be backed fully by the Liquid organization so congrats to him. I'm very excited to see guys what kind of products or apparel he offers and especially at what price points to help myself and my future website for all of you guys as well. And I actually have an announcement for all of you guys within three weeks from today I should be selling my very first t-shirt and the prices should be below $25 and also a really quick announcement for all of you guys I'm going to be limiting every single shirt to just selling 50 units and that way every single shirt is going to be unique and you know I'm not going to oversell one type of design so I'm very excited guys and a semi important announcement guys for Optic Gaming they have dropped Mixwell no not in that way guys they've dropped Mixwell from the primary opera role he will continue as a rifler for the team it's gonna be very curious to see though one of these weird teams out there a kind of a hybrid team where they have at least four operas on their team that can pick up that weapon and then including Stanislaw, we also have Naf, including Mixwell if he wants to. And then, of course, on top of that, Tarek can also opt in some situations. So, going to be very curious to see, guys, who they pick up for that primary opting role. My personal guess would be Stanislaw, but again, a team that has at least four members who can actually do that. So, we're going to be very curious to see, guys, in the future, who's going to be opting for Optic Gaming. And finally, today, guys, in CS News, HLTV finalized a couple days ago their MVP medals for ESL New York, as many of you guys probably heard about. The first of which went to SK Gaming's very own Cold Zero. The second of which went to second place team Vernus Pro and Neo on that team got an MVP medal and the first of course went to Navi's very own symbol who actually had a very good tournament a high KDR for many of the matches besides maybe a couple that you actually count out and sort out through so Navi symbol Vernus Pro's Neo and SK Gaming's very own Cold Zero took home three MVP medals guys so congrats to them for being our three MVPs for ESL New York and it was kind of unfortunate though that Liquid did not get a medal for any of their players I thought they actually performed very well and actually outright for a team that was not looking very good before ESL New York but it does make sense though to only have three medals because it's kind of like a gold silver or bronze type of thing. I guess four medals would kind of throw it off. But either way, guys, those are our MVPs uh, by HLTV standings for ESL New York. As always, guys, thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed this episode of CSK News. I had a great time making it. I'm going to actually make an episode tomorrow as well to make four days in a row. And then I'm going to be gone all this weekend traveling with some buddies. I'm actually going on a long, long road trip. I cannot wait. going to be very fun. So thank you all for the great support as of late. I will be choosing the YouTube revenue giveaway winners probably early next week. And I'll be announcing that in a CSK News episode. So make sure to watch out for that, guys. Thank you all for the great support. Please leave a comment down below so I can reply to it. I actually failed with that challenge yesterday, but I promise I will try my best today. I've been super busy this week. So hope you guys all enjoy. Live, love, laugh a lot. My name is Jake. Remember, I like you. I'll see you all next time. Remember, I like you. Goodbye.